what's up guys back again with another video this episode we're going to be going over how to create your own thread which uh, last episode we went over how to manipulate the main thread but this time we can create our own which is really cool and it's going to get really fascinating because we can run two things at once basically and that's really fun to look at so there's actually two ways to create a thread like i went over a little bit uh maybe two episodes ago and so the first way is by making a class and implementing the interface runnable or you can uh, just extend the thread class directly. So let's go ahead and do the runnable method. So let's go ahead and make a new class here. Um, so public class my thread. And then once you have this here, once what we're going to do is have a basically kind of what we did last episode. We're going to create a thread like variable reference to the object thread or class thread I don't know what to call it but yeah and then once we have that what we need to do is have a constructor here and this constructor what it's going to do is create the thread okay so once we call um, you know this method or this constructor method it'll create the thread so by create to create threads um, it looks a little bit like this let me copy it here it's like that so you have the um, the what's it called we have to create a new um, object in the type thread so it's basically like doing this. So thread t, which is you know up here, and equals new thread, basically like that. And then you know have the the parameters. So that's what that is. We could um yeah, this is just good to have it all like up here, the the reference at least. And then um that's what you're supposed to do. So I have the reference up here, and then we create the uh, object like this. So what you have to do is create a new object, and the parameters will be um. Well, the first one, that's the um, instance of the class that implements the runnable interface. So this will be, it'll be this basically. So we're going to have this, uh, the this keyword right here. So, I mean, I'll show you in a second. And then here is just the name of the thread. You know, pretty simple, right? It's a string. So anyway, let's do that. So T equals new thread. And then again, we're going to put this here. So that will just reference, you know, this. And then, um, and then we give it a name here. We'll call it my cool thread. Something stupid like that. And what's the problem? Oh wait, <laughs> we forgot to implement runnable, of course. So go up here and then do implements runnable. There we go. So now that um, that clears up because you know, yeah, it just works. Because um, this whole method here comes from runnable. Okay, that's where we're getting it from. So that's why I couldn't recognize it. So what we have to, um, have to also do, but before we do that, we have to, let's just go ahead and print this out. We'll print out um, child thread created. And then we'll just print out the thread. Okay, that should work. And then, um, so what we have to do, we have an error here because whenever you have an interface, of course, you have to implement the unimplemented methods. So what the implement uh, method is for this is the run method. So we can do public void run that's the one we have to implement so inside of run this will be all of our code that's inside of our thread okay so basically anything that you could ever ever put inside of the main method i mean the main thread here which is inside of here the main method that can go here because we're making a thread and they're both threads so let's just code that goes inside of here anything that you want to run okay but we're, what we're going to have inside of here is just what we had last episode is that countdown thingy so let's go ahead and do that first of all, we'll have a try statement here then we'll catch Interrupted exception, I believe that's what it was. And then so E. Okay. Great. And then we'll do this. For int i equal to five. I is bigger than zero. I minus minus. Okay. And then so I and then thread dot sleep for a thousand. Great, so that should count down uh, five seconds. So that works pretty good. So basically a rundown again of what we did is we uh, created a variable reference here of the object thread. I mean, the object type thread, I guess. And then um, we have a constructor here. So whenever we uh, create a new object of this class, it'll run all this code here. And what this code does is create a new thread, basically, that's what it's doing, and then gives it the name MyCoolThread. And then what this does is create um, 
basically says that you want to call this method here inside of this class basically so that's what you don't have to really worry about that but yeah so that's what that does is creating a new thread here and this is just outputting the thread basically so we don't have to have this here but yeah but we have to have this method here this is the implemented method method that has to be here because it's a uh, interface that we're implementing and so we add that and then anything inside of here will be run. So what we do now, whenever we create a new thread inside of here, if that's where we're going to put it, we have to um, call this start method. And what the start method does is basically just run this method, the run method. So that's how you start a thread is just by calling the start method. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do here is do, we're going to, we have to create a new object of this class, obviously. So my thread um, bear. I don't know what to call it, so I'll just call it bear, equals new my thread. So simple, right? So let's go ahead and run that, and nothing will happen. Oh, you get an error. What's the error? Java class my thread is public should be declared in a file name. Oh, so I guess whenever you have a public class, you have to have it in a separate file, which is fine. So we'll just get rid of that public keyword. Okay, so this runs, and... Um, what it's doing is simply um, just creating the thread, but it's not really doing anything. It's created the thread, but it's not running the thread because we didn't call it the start method, obviously. Like I said, we have to do. So that's good. At least it works now. It says what the child thread is too. It prints it out. So good. It says Michael thread five main. Pretty cool, right? And it's within the main uh, main thread group. So that's why it says main here, of course. And it's a default priority because we didn't assign one. So awesome. That works. So if we want this countdown to start, you know, this code to run, we have to call it the start method. But it's actually not like this. It's not bear.start or bear.run. It's bear.t.start. Because that's what we said the uh, thread name to be. Um, I don't know why I named it t, but you know, it's just a placeholder, you know? So what we do is call t, which is, you know, basically the thread, the object of the thread. Yeah, yeah that makes sense, the object of the thread. So we're calling the object of the thread and then dot .start because it's basically a static method, I believe. I'm not really sure, but yeah. So anyway, it's starting this, and let's go ahead and, um, and obviously the start method is just going to call run here, and then just start the method, I mean the thread. So let's see what that hap what happens. So it's going to create it, and now it's doing the countdown, so that's pretty cool, right? Something we've already done before. But now, um, since we created our own thread here, we can make as many as we want, of course. But anyway, before we do that, let's go ahead and create what we did last episode, and let's just go ahead and um, run some code inside of our main thread here also, alongside this thread. So what we're going to have to achieve here or what we are going to achieve here is running two threads at the same time. So basically we have this new bear thread here and then we're running it alongside the main thread. Alongside the main thread. Yeah. So they're running at the same time. So let's see what happens. It's really cool. Watch the console. Suddenly so you get 5, 5, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1. So that's really cool. They're running at the same time. That just blows my mind. So yeah, that's what you can do with that. So what we did is create a thread here, and it's very simple. It might seem a little complex, but don't worry. It's really simple. And yeah, so that's how you do that. So the next way to make a thread, of course, is by extending the in, extending thread directly, the thread class. Battery so low. we do that by extending thread. So let's get rid of all this code. I'm just going to copy this you know, account down here because I don't want to type all that out again. So what we're going to do is get rid of all this. And we'll keep this one, but we'll get rid of this one here. And then we'll do, so what we have to do for the second method is extends thread, okay? So if we extend thread, what we have to do then is override thre uh, the run method. Because you just have to do that whenever you extend thread. So no matter what, even if you, both methods, you always have to extend, I mean, uh, do this run method here. You always have to uh, override it. So within that, you're just going to have your code again. So let's just go ahead and paste that like that. Great. It's a little unformatted, but oh well. Oops. There we go. So we'll just leave it like that. That's fine. Um, obviously, um, well, not obviously, but we also need our constructor here again. So new thread. Oh no, my thread. I mean, that's what it was called, my thread. And then my uh, inside my thread, we'll have a. We have to call super here. So super. That's just going to call a method that's inside of the thread class, because obviously, whenever you, you're extending class, you can call. Um, the method, the constructor method of the superclass, basically. We have went over that a few, not a few episodes ago, but a while back, we went over superclasses and subclasses. So it's a pretty simple concept. So right here, all we're doing is providing a name as the parameter. So 
we'll call it my cool thread again. Um, so pretty simple, right? So that's just um, what this is doing is basically making the thread here like we did last time with the other method. So um, you just don't need to provide a the, this keyword anymore because it's being run inside the thread class, super class basically. So then we're just gonna print it out again. So child thread created. So uh, yeah, and then instead of T here, because we never created a variable reference, we can simply run this, which just prints out the thread because this is a thread now. That's a subclass of thread. So this basically is the thread. Um, it's hard to explain, but yeah. So um, yep, that's it, basically. That's all we gotta have, basically. So just our run method here, we overrided that from you know the superclass, and then we have a constructor here. So you might be wondering, how do we uh, start the thread now? Um, but I'll show you that in a second. First, obviously, we need to create a uh, object of this of this class here. So my thread uh, bear again equals new my thread. So that obviously is just gonna run this here and then create the thread, give it a name of Michael thread, and let's go ahead and test that out by running it. Good, and it's only counting down because we have this running here. So it's not this one running because we didn't call the star method yet. So how do we call the star method? But um, by uh, just doing bear dot start. So this time we can call it directly without, because we don't have a reference type because we don't need it because we're actually extending it directly. So that's not too complicated, but what the super thing does again, it's just, um, it invokes the, the, you know, the constructor inside of the thread super class and that just creates a new thread. So yeah. So, I mean, they're both very similar except that, um, Whenever you extend thread, you can also extend other methods that come with the threaded superclass. And uh, I'm not going to go over those right now. But uh, yeah, so that's why um, if you're wondering why you use one over the other, whenever you're just using um, like this, for example, you're only, you only want to run a piece of code and you don't want to um, override any other methods that come with uh, the superclass of thread, you would just ex uh, implement runnable if you're just going to do something simple like that. But if, of course, if you're going to... Um, Try and override the other classes that I mean other other methods that come within the thread superclass. Then you would want to use extends thread. So hopefully that's not too confusing. But uh yeah. So I mean that's pretty simple, right? Um it's really really cool to me because we can run two things at once now basically. And uh, yeah, so um we just created our own threads now. So that's pretty cool. So next episode we're going to be going over creating multiple threads. And yeah, so if you like this episode, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, leave, just leave a comment. I'll help you. Uh, there's a Discord in the description you could join. Uh, leave a like and peace.